Howdy y'all, Joe Hills here recording as I always do in Nashville, Tennessee, and in today's episode, we're hopefully going to go ahead and get our first sculpture installed, even though I'm not entirely certain I'm happy with the roof in here. I feel like it's more important to kind of move forward with the project than to get bogged down in the little details. So let's go ahead and run on down the stairs here, and turn on our heads-up display so we don't smack our heads into anything up above us. Let's drop down, descend into the level of the physical material realm to our shipping and receiving office here. And it looks like, well, wowie woo, pieces of the first few sculptures have already come in. I'm thinking I'm going to go ahead and make some room in my inventory here and grab these. This is a sculpture that I'm very excited about. It came from the original Hermitcraft server. I think you guys are going to like it quite a bit once we get it constructed. One thing that this sculpture actually brings to mind, though, is a problem. And that's kind of why I wanted to lead with it rather than the other one. The other sculpture is just going to go on the wall, mounted, super easy, straightforward. Whereas this sculpture is made of sandstone. And I'd originally thought, okay, I'll use sandstone as the surface for displaying the different pieces of artwork and sculpture here. But because this sculpture is made of sandstone, that's a low contrast environment for that sculpture. Like, if I tried to put down a bunch of sandstone slabs here, right? Like, so, whoops, already going poorly. But that's my point. So let's say that I have a sculpture made of sandstone. I decide, oh, okay, I'm going to put this on top of here. Well, it's not really clear where the sculpture begins and the platform ends, right? That is an undesirable, low-contrast environment. Most, like, art galleries and stuff will try to have high-contrast environments. They'll have white walls and dark floors, dark ceilings, that sort of thing. So let's go ahead and hop back up. Hop back up. Hop on top. Uh, hop back up here. And go ahead and get an alternate contrast in uh, color. Now, one thing I'd considered for the floor here was to use the black stained clay. And I'm not sure. I'm kind of thinking I might even go ahead and set up like an A-B testing environment here. Where we'll set up like a four wide strip of the black stained clay and a four wide strip of the coal. Let's just kind of see which one is a, a more neutral and kind of high contrast environment that demonstrates that this is a, a artistic platform here. So one thing I'm noticing about the black stained clay already is it's actually like a darker brown than the other brown. So that's good, but it's not really black. It's just blackish. So let's go ahead and lay some sandstone. Whoops, that, that doesn't serve our purpose as well. So let's lay some sandstone slabs atop of here in, a, in an L shape. And we'll do the same here. Of the two, I feel like the coal kind of presents a higher contrast, not only with the sandstone itself that makes up the piece, but also with the general floor of the gallery here, because we want to distinguish maybe the, the presentation area from the rest of the gallery. I don't know, or, or maybe we want to present this on just the same sort of orange stained clay floor that we present everything else on. But I feel like having... Having the piece on a a uh, on on the coal here is gonna definitely set it apart more from the rest of the gallery. It's gonna establish kind of the boundaries of where the piece begins and ends, and where my patience begins and ends. Oh my goodness, I cannot keep falling down here. This is gonna slowly drive me mad. I'm not a big fan of being slowly driven mad. Just, just, you know, kind of a interesting note. For anybody who's who's listening, that's that's something that you might want to write down about me. Not a high priority for me to be slowly driven mad. Not really super appealing. So, anyway, we're going to go ahead and set this platform up here like so with the coal that we've got. I'm not sure if I've got enough coal. Uh, let me check. I think that this piece, if I do the math in my head, it's like 4 plus 3 plus another 3 long. And it's about five or six deep. So let's see here. Well, we're out of coal anyway. So hopefully it's going to be the right uh, right dimensions. I guess I could always go get more coal from my coal store. But I'd rather not things come to that. Now I'm going to pull up on my other computer 
the plans or schematics to reconstruct here exactly how this looked when it was originally constructed. Okay, so I've done some quick math, and it turns out that this platform here is, is like 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11. It's only 11 long and 5 deep. And it really needs to be about 7 deep and maybe 13 wide. So that's actually a lot of coal blocks we don't have right now. Let's go run back up to our store, uh, our store and see if we can maybe get some coal out of it. We've got a whole store dedicated to like things that should be on fire later, which hopefully don't include our gallery. Let's run in here. Hey, No Hills, thanks for guarding the coal. Well, we don't have a ton of coal left in here. Let's check if there's any in the furnace in our little meat shop here. Yay, there's a little bit extra. As well as, hey, we have actually finally sold some meat. I'm going to go ahead and take these four diamonds because we are now wealthy. We are now very wealthy, actually. Four diamonds on a server that's this young. We're pretty much like Richie Rich meets... um. I don't know, who else is really wealthy? Tony Stark. Yeah, we have a lot in common with Tony Stark, you could say. You know, we're very we're very heroic, and we're very handsome, and I don't know, we are maybe the Iron Man. It's a, it's a mystery to everyone. So let's go ahead and grab these. That is another 25 blocks of coal. That might not be enough. Okay, we need more coal. I've got a Fortune 3 pick, though. Let's go ahead and take our Fortune 3 pick. There's actually... Hey! That was a lot easier than I thought. That That's actually not why I came down here, but I forgot that I would actually used coal as a marker earlier to indicate the center of the, uh, the thing here. But what I was actually coming down here for is that there is a bunch of tunnels down here. I started exploring them, but I haven't really fully explored them. Which diamond pickaxe is this? This is the efficiency. We want. Let's go ahead and get the Fortune 3 one out. Okay, so we got a bunch of tunnels down here that are kind of partially lit, probably full of mobs, full of bats at least. Iron, you are not what I need right now. Hey Cole, you are what I need, but let's go ahead and also clear the uh, side of the tunnel that goes this way real quick because we don't want creepers jumping up in our faces being like, Hey Joe Hills. I heard of you. You're pretty famous. You know, I, I'm i a big fan of your Hermitcraft series and your Hermitcraft 2. Ooh, that's an Enderman series. But uh, anyway, and a zombie series. Wow. You are not a very good fortune pick. You know that? Enjoy being skeletonized. No, wait. What is it we do to zombies? We slay them. As we continue this way... Oh! Well, let's light that up real quick. There's that spawner I found earlier. I didn't explore it too heavily at the time because I was a little bit like, oh, I'll come back on camera and light this up. And then I turned the corner and there it was already. Boom. More things that we can hit with a diamond pickaxe. Fortune favors the bold. And it favors those who make their own fortunes and their own fortune cookies. Have you baked your own fortune cookies today? Because if you don't, then maybe you should. Write down a little bit of knowledge on a piece of paper. Bake it inside a little bit of papery cookie. I don't know why I'm saying about making fortune cookies. I guess they might be fried and not baked at all. I guess I better fall. No, better not fall. That would be bad if I fell down here. Like anything could be down here. Even even coal. Which I actually do need, so, I mean, that's that's going to be one of those things like we consider going down there, maybe. So I've gone ahead and emptied most of my inventory into here. Oh, hey, a zombie followed me home. Man, you are very diligent. You must have come a long way. Anybody else follow me from all the way back down there? If so, I got an arrow for you. Tax free. Well, enjoy. Enjoy your flame and arrow. Anyway, so... Let's see, this is one deep, three deep, five deep. We need to go seven at least. Okay, so I'm, I'm looking at just the width of one piece of this, and clearly this whole space needs to be wider. We do not have sufficient, like, clearance here to make this piece work. I thought that this would be wide enough, but that's that's not okay. So let's say you're coming down the stairs here. Yeah, that's, 
That's just not good enough. We need to pull the whole thing over and back, I believe. I like the idea of having the the uh, kind of skirt in front of the sculpture still be in the same black. But what I think I'm going to need to do here, actually, is going to be to put orange stained clay in and shift the entire thing back one. And uh, then even make this further deeper here. Although it's not as vital to me. Well, maybe I should have it a walkway all the way around the, the presenting area, too. So I'm going to need orange stained clay as well. So from here, though, it's pretty obvious that the, the bidden box should not be directly in the way of the piece. It should be, like, right here. And we'll put the uh, bidden books in here so that people can do their bidden as they see fit. And that clears up some inventory space so I can go ahead and grab the stuff I need to uh, make the effective changes I want to make. Okay, so I've expanded and shifted the platform. I'm going to go ahead and start placing some blocks, and hopefully they'll work out the way I think that they should work out. Okay, so this is, this is generally and broadly better. However, a few notes. One, part of the sculpture should not be hanging out the back here. That is, that is not cool, as the kids would say. So what we're going to do is we're going to rip out a bunch of this, and I'm kind of wondering how I want to have... Maybe I want to have the walkway for this part be the orange sandstone that comes around here. And But anyway, I only need the... Uh, I only need the uh, black part here to go as deep as one offset from the sculpture itself. Getting all of this coal back is going to be a real pain. Dang it. Let's hop down. Yeah, and I can't just leave this stuff because it's, it's it obviously taking me a lot of effort to, uh, to grab thus far. I don't, I'm not rolling in coal or coal rolling as they say in West Virginia. Here we go. Up we go. Ascend it again, again. Dang it. Okay, so we're actually going to need to go too deep here, I think, to make this actually work. And I think we'll want to go ahead and put lights... Dang it, this I did not really think through, how to get the uh, blocks underneath here. There we go. We're obviously going to want to light this sculpture. And I think that the best way to do that is probably going to be to put some torches on the, the pathway around it. Like, we can't just leave these right here, per se. But we could leave them, like, here and here. Right? That, that, that seems okay, logically speaking. Bye-bye, brush or shrub. Whatever you do, you're done with it. Okay. So using the orange stained clay to have a, a steep shelf out here is going to seem unnatural because I've dug out part of the mesa underneath it, or it just never existed. So let's go ahead and grab some orange sandstone and hopefully get this wrapped up, as well as put the finishing touches on the sculpture. I don't want to do the fine detail work until we're sure that we, dang it, got everything perfectly otherwise. Okay, so we got the platform that wraps around the piece here. We've got the piece itself on its own little platform. I'm a little worried about the Latin interior to the piece, and I'm thinking I might even do something like this to provide some under Latin for the piece in, in such a way that's relatively inobtrusive. And then what I'll do is I'll come down underneath here and just kind of block that up like so leaving me with no convenient way to get back up there. Oh, but my stairs work. And it also lets me see from this platform here, what would I see if I'm looking at that? Yeah, that seems about right. That's okay. It's nothing too terrible. If I'm up here, can I look down at the piece? Uh, I can, actually. And that torch uh, with the coal doesn't seem too out of place. It's a little recessed. Still less flashy than having actual, like, glowstone in there. And then from here, you can see the piece pretty well. So let's go ahead and do the final four details. This is, of course, a recreation of the palace at Westminster. And there's Big Ben. So I think that's, that's pretty good. I had originally built this on the Hermitcraft 1 server back in February of 2013. So let's go ahead and put some details on a sign. Okay. Hey. 
So there we go. Palace at Westminster by at Joe Hills, February of 2013. This is item number two. The bidden's now open. I should probably take all this extra stuff out at some point. That would look really a lot more professional than just like having random stuff in here like ink sacks. That is that is really if you're gonna curate like a professional art show, you don't just leave like sacks of ink everywhere. That is not part of your modus operandi. So let's see, yeah you can just appreciate the whole piece now. Boom. That is one awesome Westminster Palace. I'm pretty happy with it. I think it came out pretty well, all things considered. I think that we did a good... I'm hearing a baby zombie. Dang it, zombies. Y'all need to get out of my palace. No, not my palace, my gallery. But anyway, this is. The, I'm pretty happy with this. I hope you are too. Feel free to leave a comment or uh, complain vehemently to me that I've misconstrued the spirit of Westminster Palace. I don't think I have. I think I captured it pretty well. It's about this color... It's about this size, you know, proportionally. So, anyway, we'll open for business more formally. We'll get another piece in in our next episode or sometime in the next few episodes at least, depending on what catches my fancy. Anyway, I'm just rambling on and on because I enjoy talking to y'all so much. Until next time, y'all, this is Joe Hills from Nashville, Tennessee. Keep adventuring. Smooth pan.